I wonder if you've ever thought, what is my role in pointing sports people to Jesus? If, if God is in charge, if God is sovereign over the whole universe, what is my role? Why am I involved? What do I do? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul helps us really wrestle with this. It starts in verse 1 as he says, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. So many of us in our teams, in our clubs, in our competitions, we may have shared life with sports people time and time again. We may have had the opportunity to talk about our faith in Jesus, even perhaps to read the Bible with them. And sometimes we can lose heart. We can lose heart when we don't see them become Christians. We can lose heart when our friends, our sports friends, perhaps mock us or reject or dispute the message of the gospel. So Paul saying, hey, look, we do not lose heart. Why? Because of God's mercy is a great reminder to us that we too, as sports people living in the context of sport, do not lose heart. Why? Because of God's loving mercy to us through Jesus. As I remember what Jesus has done for me, as I remember that I am deeply loved by the Father, as I remember the great news of the gospel and the eternity that awaits those who believe in him, I don't lose heart. However hard, however difficult, however many times people reject, we don't lose heart. So, so what are we to do? What is our role? Look at verse 2. It says this, Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. It's really tempting, isn't it? To deceive or distort the word of God. To perhaps say to people, hey, look, become a Christian and it's great and you'll have real joy for the rest of your life when we know that Christians struggle too. Or to distort the word of God by leaving out some of the hard parts of the gospel message. That we are sinners, that we have rejected God and we deserve his judgment. But Paul says no. Don't use deception, nor distort the word of God. On the contrary, he says, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. What's our role? Well, it's to set forth the truth plainly. Plainly. Not to distort it or use it in a shameful way, but plainly present the good news of Jesus Christ. Later on in, in verse 5, he says this. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Do you see what he's saying? It's not about pointing them to you and you as a Christian, but to point them to Jesus in what we say and how we live. So what's our role? To not distort the word, not to deceive people, to not point to ourselves, but to point them to Jesus Christ. But you see, that's not the end of the picture. Back in verse 3, we see there's another party at play. And even if your gospel is veiled, says Paul, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Just look at verse 3 for a moment. Do you see what he's saying? He says that to people in the world, to sports people in your club and team, the good news of Jesus is veiled. It blinds their minds. And what does he do, this God of this age, the devil, Satan? He stops people seeing the light of the gospel. Literally, he stops people seeing Jesus for who he really is. The Son of God, the Saviour of the world. At this stage, perhaps you're feeling, well, I might lose heart. 
My role is to present the truth plainly and my sports friends' minds are blinded by the Satan himself. What hope do I have? As I try and not point to myself, but point to Jesus in my relationship with them in what I say and how I live. So easy, isn't it, for us as Christians in the world of sport to lose heart. But be clear on your role. Present the truth plainly. Be clear on the battle that we're in. The friends we have in sport, their minds are blinded. They cannot see Jesus for who he really is. But listen to this incredible news in verse 6. Look at what it says. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Do you see right back at the beginning of that verse, he said, for the God who said, and then he quotes Genesis chapter one, right at the beginning of the Bible. You see, Paul wants us to be crystal clear here that it's God's power that unblinds a mind. It's the same power that he used to create light out of darkness in the universe that he uses to shine light into our hearts to give us the light knowledge of God's glory so that we can see Jesus for who he really is. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have that kind of power to create light from nothing. And it should be a great relief to us that we do not have the power to shine light into our friends' hearts. There's only God that can do that. It's only God as the truth is presented plainly. It's only God that can, by his power, shine his light into their hearts so they can see Jesus for who he really is. Do you know what? That's the same for you too. When you first heard and responded to the message of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, God's power into your heart, and you saw Jesus for who he is for the first time. Isn't that amazing? And it's a relief, isn't it? And verse 7 helps us understand why it's a relief. Look at what it says. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. You and I are the jars of clay, simple, ordinary sports people, living our lives amongst other people who don't know the Lord Jesus for who he really is. And the treasure we have is this Knowledge is understanding that Jesus is who the Bible says he is. He is the son of God. He is the saviour of the world. And the reason why God uses jars of clay like you and me, simple, obedient sports people, to display this incredible message is so that our friends see him and not us. So that our sports friends see God and Jesus in all his glory are not us. Remember back to verse 5? Who do we preach? It's not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. So what is our role in telling sports people the gospel? Well, don't lose heart. Please, if you've been going for ages in your sports club and you've been rejected time and time again, perhaps you're the only Christian in your club, in your city, then keep going. Not out of strength of will or discipline, but as you remember God's mercy to you and the good news of the gospel message. And then don't distort the word. Don't try and deceive and trick people to becoming Christians. Present the truth plainly, pointing to him and not you. Remembering there's a battle. Their minds are blinded. They can't see Jesus for who he really is. The devil has put a veil over their heads. But God, in his power, and in his power alone, can unblind their minds. Unblind them so they can see Jesus for who he really is. Therefore, pray. Know your role and pray. When the opportunity comes, present the truth plainly. But be praying now, asking God 
to do that miracle, to do that work, to unblind their minds so that your friends too can know Jesus and live with Jesus now and forever.